Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, got Chris with me. Hey y'all. And we're looking at this comment from a viewer talking about Queen Esther. Okay. And in the following video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the dates corresponding to Queen Esther or um, Purim, which is the holiday we find in, or the holy day we find in the book of Queen Esther. And we're going to see how it fits as far as the other feast days are concerned. Right. See how it fits into the Father's plan. Esther, there's a book called Esther, but the story is actually about Mordecai. He's mentioned there. Read Esther chapter 2, verse 7. Verse 7, and he brought up Hadasha, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. But what this class is about is how does this story in the book of Esther fit into the father's prophetic timeline. So can you take a picture of this? Mm -hmm. All right, so Esther falls in this time period right here about 476, uh, that's BC. But praise our Father in heaven, what we've been thinking is that these time periods of 490 years actually make up these 12 periods of time. So there's 12 divisions with each one showing a different major event? Mm, yes, something like that, sure. Because some of them aren't so major as the event, but the person. Yeah. Like Shem, you know, during that time period, we have to look at the, the um, numbers to see how we come up with this data. Basically starting right here, once you understand this one here, it gets more simple. But that one in itself is kind of, I wouldn't say complicated. First of all, go to um, the book of Luke. Chris, and look for the word Tiberius. Okay, Luke 3 and 1. Read that one. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetriarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetriarch of Ithura, and of the region Trachonitis, and Lysanias, the tetriarch of Abilene. All right, now that is talking about his first year. Now, if you would, scroll down and see where it's talking about how old the Messiah was. Okay. Verse 23. And Jesus himself being to be about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. All right, now with those two verses, what you see is that Tiberius, this was in the year 28 AD, based on what we saw in verse 1. Mm -hmm. And then you understand our father's prophetic plan that this Messiah, the word, was supposed to come on the fourth day. Right. Okay. Um, or after, I should say, the fifth day, because it's, there was no year zero. What you're doing is starting at the beginning of the fifth day. In the first day and going 4,000 years. Right. So if you back up 4,000 years, um, you end up with creation, which is, um, and I did the math wrong here, this number right here, 3972. Mm -hmm. But then you have to go forward 66 years. To account for. Cain and Abel. These were the first humans. Right. Yeah. But come down to verse 33 because we want to see how we're, we're coming up with the first Jubilee year or the cycle. First Jubilee cycle is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Started in 3906. That was year one. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. And Adam called the name of his wife Eve. So we're right here at the beginning. Go ahead. And they had no son till the first jubilee. And after this, he knew her. Okay, so notice that part right there. After the first jubilee. Yeah. So okay. it's saying that he didn't 
know her. You know what that means, but right. But they didn't have any children until the first jubilee. Right after it had started. Right now, go to the next verse. Now he tilled the land as it had been instructed in the Garden of Eden. Okay, so we wanted to make sure we finish that verse up because go to the next verse. Chapter four, and in the third week of the second jubilee, she gave birth to Cain, and in the fourth she gave birth to Abel, and in the fifth. She gave birth to her daughter, Awan. So, there you have the year of the Jubilee. It tells you plain and simple when the first year was. Mm -hmm. When the Jubilee is. And that's how you start the first year. Because you start from creation. Adam, 66 years earlier. Yeah. Has now given birth to the first person. The first human. Mm -hmm. Like we said, the first one was a belly button, and it equates to 3906. All right. Give or take a year, because, you know, we're talking about BC time, and then you're talking about creation time, and the Monday time, because as far as the end of Monday, that was day one, year one, month one, uh, cycle one, whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so what we're doing is going from day one, simply going 490 years. So what we're saying is, is that Cain and Abel were in the first month. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to call it beside a month. Well, I need to call it a month to make this point is that this is according to our father's holiday, holy day cycle, his holy day cycle. So Cain and Abel would have been during the first month. Mm -hmm. Cain or Abel would have been the first sacrifice. It would have been the lamb. Yeah. Now there's a verse over in the third testament. I have to put it up on the screen that you know first gave me that idea that the Messiah wasn't truly the lamb. They only called him the lamb because they crucified him on Passover. But thing about it, they about to crucify us again here on Passover. You better start paying attention. But anyway, you have month one here with Cain and Abel, and then month two here with the fallen angels, month three here with Noah, month four with Shem, month five with Abraham, or the covenant particularly, because Abraham came a little earlier, but then you have um, um, right almost smack dab on time, uh, Jericho came in 1456, a year later, almost a year, this was the, the sabbatical year started in 1456, uh, point five, and then well, I shouldn't say it started there, but in fourteen fifty five point five, or I should say the spring of fourteen fifty five, is when they blew the trumpets on Jericho and the walls mm -hmm. fell. So that's the pivot point. Um, when we go to the Book of Jubilees, go back over there and show them that right quick. Verse four: Wherefore I have ordained for thee the year weeks and the years in the Jubilees. There are 49 jubilees from the days of Adam until this day, and one week and two years. And there are yet 40 years to come for learning the commandments of the Lord until they pass over unto the land of Canaan, crossing the Jordan to the west. All right, so that tells us the jubilee year. That tells us how many, that tells us, you know, exactly um, that we're on day five here. Yeah, tells you exactly how many days from... When he gave the speech. All right. And so that's how, you know, you can go either way based on that number. You can get back to Cain at 3906 or you can even get back to Adam at uh, 3972. You have Cain and Abel in month one. Then in month two, which would have been a second Passover, you have the fallen angels. Month three, which would have been Pentecost or, or the time that they got the law there at Mount Sinai. Yeah. That's when you have Noah. Which brings to mind the uh, Noahic covenant, not the Noahic covenant. That's a different, that's some man-made stuff. The the, the the actual covenant that was given to Noah, right. um, um, that's in the book of Jubilee chapter 6. Okay, let me jump over there and look at that. But the next one you have here on day 3 or month 3 was when you got the, that covenant. And then on month 4 is when... We got Shem. After Shem and around the flood time, you have the Abrahamic covenant. Now, see, that's like we were saying earlier. Abraham came earlier. 
you know, Abraham was also born in an idolatrous house, too. Yeah. So. Because his father was an idol maker. Yeah. So it wasn't until he was 99 years old. I want to say 100, but it wasn't until he was 99 years old that he actually got the covenant, you know, of circumcision. Okay. And, that, and these covenants are still in effect. That's why we still get circumcised to this day. And so you say, uh, okay, coach, where's the uh, covenant with the fallen angels or with um, um, Enoch? Well, well, for that, I say you had to go to the first chapter, first verse of Enoch. And, you know, that's the end time. You know, yeah. If it's in that book, then it's the end times covenant. We don't even know about it until now in these days people are starting to read it. But anyway, so you have um, Noah, then you have Shem, and then you have the Abrahamic covenant. Um and then you have Jericho, like I said, which is right the next year. You know, these some of these were 30 and 40 years later. But this was the next year. Yeah. Then you have, if you go 400 years later, you have the kingdom divided. Where Jeroboam went one way and, and Rehoboam went another way. Yeah, leaving the kingdoms of Judah and Israel. And so you fast forward another 490 years. You have the decree to rebuild Jerusalem. Yeah. By Darius the second. So this is after Israel has been captured and the temple has been destroyed. And about to be rebuilt again. Right here. Mm -hmm. And then you go another 490 years and you're around that time when the Messiah walked into Jerusalem at 12 years old. Yeah. That was about that time. So this the, the Messiah. Now you get into Daniel's prophecy when he starts talking about the Messiah the Prince. Mm -hmm. You got to understand, he wasn't a king until he was an old man. Right. right. So yeah, that's the trick to that verse is the Messiah, the prince shall come. Month five was the time when the temple fell. Come over here and let's look at some of these. Um, the first month we have the temple being cleansed. That's when you look through the scripture and look at the events of the first month. As you see, it's basically a temple cleansing period. Even that's what um, the Feast of Passover is all about. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And then the next one, you have the ark. That's with Noah. Okay. Okay. And then the, that's that's um, the second month. So it's like everybody getting in the ark in the first month. And then people getting on the ark in the second month. Because you get in in Passover. That's oh, yeah. Time. yeah. 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 And so the next on the third month, you have the covenant. Mm -hmm. And that's like I said, with that's that's with Noah. Right. No, eat, no eating blood covenant. Right. That's a big deal today because they they advertise bloody meat all the time. Mm -hmm. Even try to tell us, you know, that ain't blood, you know, and, you know, some of it, what they say is right. The, the, the um, meat is red. Red meat is red. But. There's you, also some, sometimes they don't clean the blood out of it. Yeah, too. the meat has to touch water at some point. Yeah. At least. If it never touches water, which, you know, store-bought meat doesn't touch water. If it never touches water, that's blood. That's, you know, simple as that. Where yeah. else is the blood going to go? You know, There's no like other a, way. Yeah, it's like a sponge. You have to rinse it out. You know, at least allow it to escape. And salt does a good job of that, um, along with water. So the next month, the fourth month was the month of the famine. That's when they started to tear down the temple now. So this has got to decline. And yeah. even in the fifth month is when they burn the temple down completely. Yeah. So we're looking at how these feast days are following the or these um, feast days are following these, the father's timeline. And we're tying this back over to these numbers here, because the question is, how does um, the event the, or the, the how does the 12th month fit in here? Well, when you fast forward um, to the time of the decree to rebuild, that's when the tabernacle was built. Yeah. Or, you know, they started, you know, getting ready to build. That's when the tabernacle, that's when the Messiah come. Then around this time, the dedication time, which would have been in the ninth. Was wait, that Maccabees time? Um, well, you got to keep going through these cycles. 490 years that take you to five, about 504. And mm -hmm. the events that happen after, because there's always after. You look right. for the significant events in, in Jerusalem that happened um after and you come up with the Dome of the Rock. Oh, yeah. The 686. Mm -hmm. And so that's 686. And then the next event would have started the next month, which would have been month 11, um, would start in about 994. And then after that is when you got the Jewish people to show up. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And the only thing about the Jewish people, the only reason why you know about the Jewish people was because they was in Germany. They was yeah. in they was in Japheth's land. They was in the Germanic Jews. Yeah, and they then in that area, there was no way they were going to do that. You know, and if they had been anywhere else, nobody would have paid attention to them, like the Quakers or the um, Pilgrims. All these people are trying to learn the Bible and obey the Bible. But, you know, you ain't going to do that in Russia. Right. You ain't doing that in Germany. You ain't doing that. You, 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 they ain't going to do it in France. And so yeah. they got, they caught a lot of attention in that area. Absolutely. And, you know, they got escorted out of there. You know, one way or the other, y'all leaving. So you have that period. And then you fast forward another 490 years. You end up in about the uh, 15th century, which is basically when we got the Bible in, you know, 1611 what yeah. fell during that time not mm-hmm. only did we get the bible for the first time and people had to understand until 1611 nobody heard of the bible right yeah until they brought it to the common person to english where people could actually read it up until then you had to understand greek and latin and that was kept away and you had to go down to you know the the synagogue or what do they call it the chapel what, what is the catholics um cathedral you had to go down to the cathedral and you had to hear it in Greek and Latin. And, you know, that was that on that. You paid them the tithes so that your uh, grandparents could go to heaven. But other than that, that's what you knew and understood. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, the first children who actually repeated the Ten Commandments were executed downtown by way of burning them at the stake. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so you ain't playing that kind of stuff in that type of neighborhood. And that's what happened to the <laughs> Jewish community. But my point is, is that this event would have happened all around the world. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You just you be wrong there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so that would have happened um, during this time period. And so then you get to the 12th month, which I believe might have mixed these up a little bit, but the 12th month started in this period here where we're getting the Bible. Mm-hmm. We're getting the third Testament of the Bible as well. Right. And look when it ends in 1974. Okay. Right. That's when the next period, starts. but you see in here that somebody's going to say, well, where's the 13? Well, we're not really interested in the 13 because of the half hour of silence. Right. Remember we did that class the other day? Yeah. And so we have found that the half hour of silence was 50 years. 50 years. Guess what happens on that day, spring of 2024? Hmm. We have the completion of an X across America. It makes a a Tav, which is the symbol of 400. Yeah, so that right there ends up, that's um, the first day of the first month in the year 2024. There is no possible way yeah. that there is a coincidence. That's Absolutely. a coincidence. There's, you know, we we praise no the way. Father for his word, but go ahead. There ain't no way. So on that up there at the top, because that's what you have. That's the cycle. How does it fit? You have Passover um, when you're basically getting in the ark. You have Pentecost, when you're going to get the law, it's when you're going to find out what the rules are to this ark that you're now involved in. Then you have tabernacles, it's when we're, we're going to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit or, you know, everybody about to get, you know, mm-hmm. um, build a shelter. And then you have the dedication of this shelter, you know, and it's important to note how the Messiah came late on that one and gave a certain speech about, you know, I say look up that speech. And then you have Purim, which is a lot of people converted over to Jews. <laughs> As, as the interest, the other part about Purim is that a lot of people are going to become Jews this time, too. A lot of people that would have, on that day, started attacking the Jewish people now, they converted over themselves. Absolutely. You know, when the king gave them permission to kill anybody they wanted, everybody became friends. Right? <laughs> <laughs> kind of strange how that happened. They're like, hey, are you a Jew? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm with y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be outside my window come seven. <laughs> <laughs> you say what you want to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, and the thing about it, that's that's when they um it, it only started on the thirteenth day of the the twelfth uh, month, and they and I think that's significant too. These days should play a, um, a role in the, the, the final um, 
calculation of these actual particular times of the month. Um, praise our Father in heaven for the scripture. All right, y'all. Well, we're going to wrap it up there. Probably be more classes on the subject. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, definitely. Well, y'all let us know what y'all think down there in the comment section. And I'll see you there. All right. So that's that on that.